What's, What's up? up? This is Draco. And this is Alicia. And you're and now tuned in to OD, OD Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Period. Okay, cool. You ready? Five, six, five, six, five, six, seven. They jump in. Jump oh, out. Oh, sorry. My name Alicia. Yeah. yeah. How you go? I uh, go to school, elementary school. Oh, I remember we went to middle school. It was like, bunch middle school. Hey, I got the muscle. Da, da, da. We were so excited to go to middle school. At least I, I, I was. I know. I used to really be in fifth grade talking about I was a senior. Not even understanding what the freak senior meant. Like a dumb. Just wanted to be grown so bad. Wanted to be a big kid. I didn't even want to be grown. I just wanted to, you know, get out of elementary school. Elementary school was long. Both folks complain about college. Have you been to elementary school before? <laughs> it was <the> longest. <laughs> Excuse me? Listen, our middle school was fun though, and then that, that was when we both. Um, well, that was like one of the first times I was able to ride the bus to school because I used to walk to school every day in elementary school. Oh yeah! Oh, so I was so excited about that. I'm like, damn, I get to catch the bus. Yeah, some people who had car privilege never understood the whole, you know, fighting on the bus, pelt rallies on the bus, roasting, twerking, <laughs> all the stuff we weren't supposed to be. Looking titties on the bus. Remember that one time? Okay. Oh. Uh, well, let's clarify. It wasn't me. It wasn't you, but I'm saying you remember. <laughs> it was a lot of stuff going on in the bus that the children should not have been doing. That's why I know that, you know, never mind. We ain't, that's another subject for another. Anybody day. got time for that? All right, so what's Just up? Know, y'all this? kids be advanced, okay? And okay, I, okay I can only imagine what they advanced. Now they got cell phones. But um, first things first, I just want to address the elephant in the room. Just kidding, ain't no elephant in here. It's just me. But uh, oh. sorry for the late episode, y'all. We just, our schedules don't always align, and we just do the best. Yes. It, was, it, was, it was me. It was the me for me. I was trying to um, be neutral with the situation, but go ahead. You no, know I mean, but they know we, we live regular lives outside of podcasting, and... I don't. Well, I do. You do you do as well. You have a regular job as well, just like me. I'm irregular, but, but okay. Um, well, it's not. I ain't gonna say regular because we both working in our career field. So we let's just let's just make that clear. But we do have jobs outside of this because we are currently, um, uh, you know, not making money from the podcast yet until y'all oh, give us some. But we about to be. I was just like, but we about to be though. We, we I mean, we do so. technically make money off the audible. We do make money off the pot. Okay. We- you're right. You're right. You're right. Right. But I'm just saying, like, um, <clears throat> we aren't able to do this full time and get paid, so we still have other stuff outside of podcasting. So I'm sure y'all understand. But yeah, as well, we do work. Podcast, we gotta keep the lights on. Yeah, I had to work, and I came back from out of town and had to work. So yeah, it's been kind of busy. Just say you hate the podcast and go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. Just feel say like, you don't care about. The I do. We feel like that. you feel like that, but I'm like, she know I'm. She know I got what I got. You know I don't feel like that, but people do be testing me like, when the episode at? Da, 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 da. I be like, listen, you go, do you see one? It's coming these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's get into the black business of the week. Oh, yeah, All right, me. so I want to shout out a very good friend of mine. Her name is Shakira. She owns a company called Brooklyn Shea. And Brooklyn okay. Shea is a company that um, provides homemade whipped shea butter made to order. My type of girl. Yes. And so um, I'm really proud of her. She's 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 good. Me and her go way, way, way. I actually saw her. Well, I saw her when I bought the product, but I also saw her when I snuck across the country back in March. Um, and because so, she we used to work for the same company. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. But yeah. uh, so Brooklyn Shea, basically, I mean, I'm gonna show you some pictures. I'll, um when y'all go to the Instagram, y'all can see it. You probably can't see it, but she literally send it to me. I got my phone. Yeah, I'll send it to you. How about that? Yeah. But so I have so she has multiple sizes. So I have um a lot of shea butter. I um so I didn't know which so she has different she has regular, she has eucalyptus now, she has um oatmeal, and then she has aloe. So I got the aloe and the original, I believe, and I got the um the the sample size or the travel size. But anyway, she has multiple sizes, and you can try them all out. And um, So right now, she's having a 20% off Labor Day sale. And so if you want to check them out, just check out. So her Instagram is Brooklyn Shea LLC. But really, dude, honestly, Shea Butter is that girl. You can use it on your hair, on your Listen, skin. You, I think you can use it in your food, can't you? You can use it literally. It's, it's literally something that you can eat. And you can put it on your skin, your face, the whole body. Now, I recently stopped using shea butter maybe like a month or two ago because um, I like to wear white socks. And the white socks, um, they turn yellow when you, because I, I be like greasing my feet, of course, but my <laughs> socks turn yellow. So, me. Man, you was walking in that junk like it was the yeah. ocean. 
I li- I cover my whole body in shea butter. Like I keep like look, I keep a jar of it. So oh yeah. So I love it. But looking at her page, her shea butter is white and it's whipped. So I definitely would probably prefer that because I feel like it won't stain my side. And does so it look cool it. whipped like that? It's just kind of it's really yeah. soft and smooth. And I um I have eczema, so shea butter is something that literally changes the game for me. But I just yeah. I really do I really love the product and um I told her I was gonna shout her out because I I'm it is get some from her because I definitely I see And guess I, what? She would, does pickups and you, right up here by me. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, um, I definitely like whipped shea butter better, but um, the beauty supply store that I normally get it from, they don't have it no more. Well, you're in luck. Not only She's get... very affordable. She has great prices, in my personal opinion. Oh, that makes me happy. Okay, let me. Um... All right, so yes, yeah, shout out to Brooklyn Shea, my girl, my girl Shakira. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, obviously Brooklyn. She from Brooklyn. She from New York or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? My name is Juan <laughs> Javica. Oh Lord. Okay, so uh, hopping into Shop Talk. Uh, first things first, rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman, man. That was some of the most shocking news. I mean, besides Kobe, because cause I think for me what made Chadwick so uniquely shocking is because we didn't know that he was suffering from cancer. But when I went back and looked at his Instagram, see, I, I, he, I didn't really keep up with him. So I'll say this. I knew I was familiar with him and I was definitely a fun, like a fan of his success, but I didn't really like follow him and see how he looked over time but you could definitely see that he had been going through chemotherapy i think some people might not have known what that looked like but i've had um people very close to me go through chemo but he his skin had changed his hair texture changed like if people um one of the surest signs you know chemo makes you lose your hair but when it grows back it comes the texture is complete you can have the coarsest hair and it come back like wavy yeah kind of like how um russell wilson's hair is it's kind of like that and his skin was dark and he probably was putting on a little makeup or something to kind of disguise a little bit but it's just it was honestly really sad it was really sad news to get because he was so young and he was just you know he kind of was i don't know i don't want to call him a breakout star because he obviously has a lot under his belt but i feel like after black panther he was just like Everywhere. everywhere yeah he yeah. was amazing um yeah i think mean, it's really sad though to see like a lot of kids being sad about it too because of course black panther is just like yeah. a popular movie and especially having a black superhero during these times is very important so i know that that was just like real heartbreaking to a lot of people as well but Yes, honestly, that is really sad because you, I mean, for him to be so young, these are people that you expect, I mean, you expect everybody to grow old, right? But this is something that really does impact kids. It's kind of like when we were little and our favorite celebrities like Le- Aaliyah and Left Eye passed away and it's like, what? And it's crazy because looking back at how young they were at that time, I mean, we're older than they were when they passed away. Well, yeah. I don't know about Left Eye, but definitely Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so um, I, this just I just want to point out, you know, from my understanding, the average age for men to um, get tested for colon cancer is 42, and he was in his 30s when he was diagnosed. So I just want people to be on top of their health. Honestly, y'all, preventive doctor visits are typically covered under your insurance. So please just go to the doctor for nothing. You, like, literally don't know what's going on inside your body. You can be having fun. You can be at six fast, turning up. You can even be twerking. But there could be some some wars going on inside your body that you won't know about until it's too late. Like, the last thing you want... Like, I think he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. So this is something that had yeah. been going on in his body for a while, and then it, then it grew. And it's a lot harder to keep, keep things like that under control once it's reached that point. So just please, just be proactive as possible, y'all, honestly. It's just some, man, it's some stuff that people have died from that they didn't even, like, they just died. They didn't even know themselves that they were battling. So just, you know. Yeah, um, colon cancer is definitely big in a black male community. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of equivalent to like breast cancer in in black women so i always tell people um you know i try to eat healthy i know i eat disgusting stuff but one thing i do take pride in is i do take a lot of vitamins and i do take a lot of detox um and antioxidants like i love stuff like that just to clean myself out um and i do a lot of like beet juice clean my system out clean everything i gotta out get this beet it's juice very thing. important I really don't like, like beets but i'm gonna try you can mask the taste. You mask the, it, the the smell. You can't mask, but you can mask the taste with pineapple and apple. Like I be, I use a lot of apple and pineapple in my juices. Today I made one. Um, I did um, ginger. I put like three apples in it, two oranges. I peeled oranges, put it in there, and then I did a pineapple, and I put turmeric in there, turmeric powder. Okay. 
So, you know, just I, I try to get, get my little health in just because I do want to make sure that, you know, I know that I'm not doing the right things all the time, but I definitely want to make sure I'm good and just pink uh colon cancer and also um is it testicular cancer? Yeah, I mean and honestly men can get breast cancer too, right? I think it's just cancer is just so violent, man. It's just one of those things that it just spirals out of control. And it's really sad, honestly. It's sad to see somebody battling it. And it's it's gotta be frightening to even get diagnosed with it. Cause you know, it's like you know, you I don't know, man. It's just scary, honestly. Mm. I'm telling you, I always do the little breast cancer test on myself because you're supposed to like feel for lumps and stuff. And any little thing, I'd be like, hold on, hold on, hold on. What was that? <laughs> what was that? And it turns out it was just my finger on the other side squeezing so got darn tight. Oh my god. <laughs> but I'd be scared, man, because you know it, it happens. And I know we're young, but we're not exempt, man. But no, not at all. Not at all, but we're gonna lighten up the mood um and, and talk about the other elephant in the room, the brandy versus monica versus Miles, I, come I, on. I'll tell you, Miles, I was in freaking um LA, I was at the beach and I left the beach early to watch it. I sat in the car, I made sure before I pulled out from the beach, I um hooked it up to the car and was driving back to my friend's house. And I was jamming in that car, okay? I had my phone set up and I was listening to it on the live speaker screaming. Now, <laughs> I've always been a person that's been, that listened to Brandy over Monica. Like, I definitely grew up on Monica, so I know all her songs. But uh, when it comes to just what I just personally play on my radio, I play a lot of Brandy because that's just who I like. I, I grew yeah. up on Brandy, too. I, I remember Brandy um, and Ray J when they had their concerts on Disney Channel. Of course, Cinderella, I got all this stuff. So I definitely yeah. was much more of a Brandy fan, but I really did not realize that I'm probably as equal to Monica Stan because, baby, Ooh, baby, Monica was pushing out some stuff that I had forgot about. And I was like, damn, I literally know all these songs. Like, I'm yeah. definitely a big Monica fan. Didn't even know. Let me tell you something. I'm so Monica. We got the same last name. Okay? <laughs> That's how Monica I am. You know what's so crazy though? I w- I love. I do. I love. Obviously, we both grew up on on Brandy, but something about Brandy. I re- I don't when her this, and this is no shade whatsoever. But when a when a Monica song comes on, I swear I get the same like ooh feeling like yeah, ooh this yeah, my yeah, song. Yeah. But honestly, when a Brandy song comes on, it's like only certain few that I'll sit there and listen to, and I like all her music. For the most part, anyways, as far as like earlier stuff, but I just can't sit and listen to. It. I don't know what it is, but and I, yeah. and, and, but I do think that the way that they set the verses up, I don't know if they like consulted with each other on like what tier of music to play. It was like perfect. Was like perfect. they comeback songs was like literally like neck and neck. Yes, and it because it was to the point like their introductory songs or songs where they went going through this, going through that. But I feel like when I played before the verses, I was preparing myself, like listen to Brandy's music, listen to Monica's music. And I was like, ain't no way Brandy can win this. But when they did the battle, I'm like, hold on now. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I did that. But I personally, I want I want to say Monica won because she's my favorite. But honestly, I don't know who won. It I think Billboard won. I said Brandy won. Yeah, I don't think it was a winner, though. I'm not yeah. on my I, end. Now, how do you feel about them their um behavior? Okay, so here's the thing. Now, I've witnessed Monica's behavior for years. Like, I think that we all know that Monica's just a real, she's just in a hood girl. Like, she's a hood. She is. Her music, so I didn't realize how I get her music. Well, I'm like, this is why I love her. Like, yeah, like girl, you remind me of my hood. Gucci's. <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> she definitely hood. So, if you, being from the hood, and especially being from, pretty much the same hood as monica Mm -hmm. i understand her mannerisms and like just the way she looks at stuff because that's what i'm accustomed to and that's what i'm used to seeing people do around me because like yeah don't you don't take take it personal and monica isn't like an industry girl like she isn't she is in the industry but she's not like he's very down to earth yeah see brandy had media training and all this other stuff so she's very like she she know how to like perform for the camera you don't think monica had media training she said she did, but I'm just, Monica is still. Oh, they did Monica. talk about that actually. Monica is still Monica, like she's yeah, still. Yeah, period. period. Uh, so I feel like from me, um, for me, I just feel like baby, that's just how Monica is. Like I don't well, think. What that did she that, do? I don't. You know, I never felt like Monica they was. Just, saying they just felt like Brandy had like much more like uppity like. What? 
And then Monica was just sitting there like, oh my God, Brandon was so awkward to me the whole time. It was so weird. I'm like, she don't know how to joke, right? Yeah, I honest to God, I didn't feel like Brandy was uppity at all. I felt like she was trying not uppity in that way. I mean like up energy, up high energy. I don't yeah, mean like I, uppity. Listen, to me, okay, so this is how I feel. I feel like Brandy was being very weird. I can you can clearly tell that they had just made back up right before the camera hit go. Okay. <laughs> um, but I feel like I don't know if it was intentional, but Brandy definitely said some things that came off shady or weird. And did um also, she just was being approved a little bit, especially about the song, the sideline HO song. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, girl, your daughter is literally an adult. And I remember who was that? My friend Stephanie was like, um, she was like, girl, your uncle is on Love and Hip Hop and he has a porno with the most famous person in America. And you ever talk about this song? <laughs> it was just weird. I just feel like Brandon was awkward. But, you know, people, I think that just might be how she is. But honestly, I don't really have a lot of recollection of Brandy's per- personality besides Moesha. And that's not even her personality. That's just her being a good actress. Yeah. Um, for starters, she's a childhood star, which is definitely <laughs> a, a, a excuse for her having, um, like, awkwardness if you look at like people like raven and stuff how awkward they are but they were child stars um uh, because you got you got to remember she started on thea so she yeah, i remember that, thea. you know what i'm saying like, like she they was, didn't really get a chance to explore themselves they kind of just performing for a living yeah yeah not only that she had a lot of traumatic stuff to happen to her like um people yeah. to this day still make fun of her for a yeah, vehicular absolutely. homicide you know what i'm saying that mm-hmm. so that probably got a lot to do with what's going on then she had to lie about her pregnancy because of her mom her mom definitely is is <laughs> to me Part of the problem the is the problem because yeah. she definitely showed to her so much as a child and just controlled her life so much that she don't even in my opinion don't even know how to think for herself so now she's like trying to function in the real world and she don't even know how to joke <laughs> and ray j the one that got away yeah and then you see monica is definitely like she definitely kept her um her streetness like she did she would be hanging out in the clubs and hanging out with just regular people talking to people like in the mall she didn't she wasn't she was never like one of those celebrities that just wasn't like yeah so i feel like that you know i don't feel like that about brandy i mean this might just be an isolated situation but i I met brandy at the airport recently like maybe two years ago and she was (laughs) super friendly and then i mean it was just nothing but i just feel like airports is a place you expect somebody to be rude because it's always a time crunch but who knows I def- Monica's just my girl. Let me tell you, we. Brandy, Brandy loves when people love her. Like she loves people talking about her in a good way. Oh, how kind. Well, what about um Brandy? Monica smacking Brandy. You heard that when they were talking about that before they before their Grammy performance. I don't know. Is that when it happened? Because I didn't know nothing about. They that. fought before that. Before that performance, and they I were know Monica stage, might man. blow with that one with them micros. <laughs> <laughs> they fought before that, so that's why they was both on the stage, man. And they, and they performed it so far because they both was really mad in real life. I would have been like, not yours, <laughs> but mine. Okay, all right. But no, okay. My last thought on that, I really wish Monica would have been more like would have sang in that on that last song. Because it just was weird. I feel like Brandy kept wanting Monica to sing with her. And Monica, number one, Monica didn't sing none of Brandy's songs. Maybe like one. And then when their their duet came on, she was singing, but like not into the mic. It was weird. It. Huh? Yeah. So she was paying it. Yeah, I'm like, dang, Monica, come on. We would love to see this. You know, but whatever. It is what it is. I'm happy it happened. And, I, and I, it's super cool just seeing the records they broke from streaming, from people logging into the live and how to... Yep. A lot of their songs are charting right now. That's crazy. Um, now the crazy part, the my, my the most awkward part about the whole thing was how Brandy kept bringing up this tour that she wanted to do with her and Monica. Was yeah, like, and is that a thing? Like, what's up with that? I'm guessing they were in talks of a tour, which I think would be good if when the streets open back up. All right, cool that too. I'm going though. I feel like that would be a bomb ass concert to see yeah. Brandy and Monica but it's like damn would they be able to last throughout the whole tour and I would and I would okay this is me being me in my head what would make the concert even more lit just so it won't be separated is if they kind of did it how Jay-Z and Beyonce did the first one at a time and they were like yes yeah I like, like that. that was fire actually 
that would be lit if they did it like that. So that it won't be like okay, Brandy's segment, then Monica's segment. It can right, because you know, folks gonna be late till Monica come on stage. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to be like I want it to be like intertwined. Like that would be lit. That would be well. We can only hope, and hopefully they can stay cool long enough for this to happen. But I'm ha- I love Monica so much. Like that's my girl for it. That's my cousin. I'm telling you, one day I'm gonna go to the family reunion, and Monica gonna be the. It ain't even gonna. Be, it's gonna be business. I'm like, oh, what's up, cuz? Mm. She's gonna be like, what's up, blue? Well, we met her in Unico that one time. That was funny. All right, so um, enough about them. What else you got? So, um, so, um, Tiana Taylor is getting a lot of black backlash currently for her new video that she just put out yesterday. Um, she put Why? out. Why? A- I thought it was nice. Am I tripping? I saw the clip. I didn't see the Not whole. Not tripping. Thing. Um, but I don't know what it is about Twitter. It just has a problem with everything. Um. But she she came out with a video and just basically showcased some police brutality, um, the timeline of it, um, just kind of, you know, and she was just emulating a lot of the people who were killed and just showing um, her way of showing love to them. And yeah. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Like, I thought the video was really cool. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know why people have a problem with it, but they are literally on the line right now dragging her to hell. Well, I know she don't give a darn. I, I hope she don't speak out against it, honestly. She will. She'll say to Sorry. What that I mean? know you ain't into science, but... I'm they, not. I'm only into it when it's right. They're going to speak <laughs> on it, baby. One thing about it. Oh, Lord. Yeah, people... You know, I you know, I know this is might be stopping people's bad, but I hope one day nobody can log into Twitter. Then it just be gone. I just hate that. I mean, I'm not gonna say people are abusing the platform, but I just hate. I just don't. I just feel like everything doesn't have to be picked apart. It's like to the point where people are so intentional about making everything the worst of possibility. Like it's just like y'all eat a Snickers, Jesus. I don't even be having nothing to say. Like mm-hmm. it's just so much. It's it's overwhelming, man. I was looking at my muted um list yesterday. I mean. It's so like my time. I don't even be moving because I got everything muted. It's gonna be the point where I'm gonna have to mute the, the English language, y'all, because y'all really piss me off. And I know I can obviously delete my Twitter and don't worry, it's on the way. But it is entertaining while I'm at home, twenty four got during seven because of COVID. Because MFers don't want to be safe and wear masks and wash their hands and social distance. All right, y'all. So today, my girl Alicia is gonna leave the episode because she has some. Really bomb information that I think that we all could use. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, um, Alicia is the queen of credit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so not nah, for real, but she has really maintained a really good credit score over the years, and just by following some things that we didn't even realize were so simple. And I think, especially for me, um, you know, having a good friend to actually tell me this stuff. And not holding it in has helped me over the last couple of months. So I've been able to um, f- fix my life, if you will. Uh, no, Ayana, just Alicia. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, she got a lot of stuff that she want to, um, you know, a lot of information that she wants to share. And then also for me, um, I can just speak on basically, you know, my experience with changing my life as far as my getting better credit and just stuff that the myths that people told me before um that i that i shouldn't do and what i should do that didn't work and i'm gonna tell you what actually did work okay yeah well i first want to preface this by saying i am not an expert okay yeah i I mean but you obviously you know not to you i'm just saying to people so if there is something that i'm saying that may not be the whole explanation this is just something that i have learned while trying to establish credit and benefit from credit in general so basically i am going to talk about credit cards different types of credit cards and what they can do for you so i'm sure a lot of people growing up like when they were younger they were always told like oh don't get a credit card credit cards are bad it's gonna ruin your your credit your debt and all this other stuff and i always felt the same way honestly and i think that people are afraid of them because they like, I think they just think that once you get a credit card, it's just this uphill battle of trying to get it paid out. But it does not have to be that way. And I'm trying not to sound like I'm selling something to y'all because I'm genuinely trying to help people understand. I do tweet this stuff out sometimes, but, you know, I do. I just want to I just want people to not only have good credit because it can get you a long way as far as establishing a comfortable life 
but I also want you to get free stuff. And I love free stuff. And if anybody knows me, I'm gonna get some free stuff. Okay. Period. Okay, so um, I got some bullet points here. So if I, if I sound like I'm reading, it's because I am. But um, so one of the things I wanted to point out is a lot of people say, oh, I have a credit card, but I only use it for emergencies or I'm going to get a credit card because I, in case something goes wrong. But in my personal opinion, that is the worst time to use a credit card because this is because if you don't have the money, the last thing you want is to use invisible money to pay for it because you still don't have the money to pay for it, okay? Um, so... Credit card companies profit off of you being irresponsible. They profit off of you paying your money, paying your bill late, not paying the bill at all, and just maxing out a card because but this is something I had to learn the hard way. So first things first, I remember when I um when I first talk, thought about getting a credit card, I was talking to um I think what happened was I went to the bank, I was at the drive through pulling some money out or whatever. And they were like, Hey, you qualify for a credit card. I was scared, but um, so I talked to talked to my general manager at the time and I was just like, you know. I don't really know if I should get a credit card. Like, this is stupid. I don't want to be maxed out having this high bill. And she was just basically like, you know, the two things. Yes, get a credit card. And number two, never just pay the minimum bill that's due. And I'm going to get to that. All right. So there's two types of credit cards, y'all. There's a secure credit card, and that is a regular or unsecured credit card. So mm-hmm. a secure credit card basically is a card that requires some sort of collateral or upfront contribution. Now that upfront contribution is money. That is the only collateral that a secure credit card needs. So for example, let's say you give the bank $200. So the two, the credit, the bank is gonna say, all right, you gave me $200 and we're gonna give you a credit card with the limit being $200. And so I think you could, I mean, you could probably, I don't know what the max amount is to be totally honest with you. I don't know like if you can do like a thousand, 10,000, who knows, do you know? Um. For a secure credit card? Yeah. Did you have a max when you got yours? No. I want to say that it can go up to like a thousand, like eight hundred or a thousand for mine. But okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I would this. I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm no expert, so these are. And I also questions. think it depends on the company and the type that you get. True. Okay, so you treat so okay, so basically, so I have two hundred dollars. I want to open a secure credit card now. Personally, I only think somebody who is looking to build or establish credit should get a secure credit card. And this is also something that's not regularly advertised because there aren't a lot of real penalties in it as it would be for a regular credit card. Mm. So um, anyway, so you use it as a regular credit card. You pay the balance before it's due. Nothing changes. You just know that you have a limit of $200. And when that bill is due, you better not have a balance. Do not carry a balance, people. All right, I'm getting all over the place. So once you have a, uh, once this, with a secure credit card, you want to make between six to 12 months of on-time, on-time payments. And this will eventually qualify you for a regular or unsecured credit card. Now, when, mm-hmm. once this is done now, there, and the reason why this is important is because you have shown the bank, like, look, y'all, I gave y'all $200. Y'all gave me $200. I paid it on time. I don't owe y'all nothing. Look, just give me a regular credit card. I don't deal what I got to do. Okay, cool. So, uh, so then you can get a regular credit card, and then if you want, you could close that that secure credit card and get your investment back. However, I highly, highly advise against closing a credit card. If there is no annual fee for a credit card, or if there is no kind of penalty for having it, just leave it open because um, having so quick rundown on how credit is calculated. Your credit utilization is calculated against your access to credit and how much you have actually used. So if you have access to $3,000 as a credit limit and you only use $10, then your credit will look extremely good versus you having a limit of $200 and you owe $10. Okay. So the, 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 the thing that you want is to have more access and no balance. So don't owe, but have the option. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I put a little note here. I said, an easy way to make good payments is just not using it on big things. Like you can literally buy a Snickers from the grocery store once a month and pay that dollar back. You, now you have established, you've used the card. They don't care what you buy. It doesn't even matter. They just want to make sure that they can trust you if they gave you a card with a bigger limit. Okay. So, um, I know I mentioned before to never carry a balance. And what I mean by that is however much money you've spent on your credit card that month, when you get your bill, there's, that bill should be zero every single time. And the reason why is because interest is involved. And I'm, I'm pretty sure secure credit cards have interest. And so yes. when interest is involved, that's just like saying, 
oh, let me get these Balenciagas and you got a 12% interest rate. Now you don't pay a thousand dollars times 12% interest. So you're just giving away money. You overpaying for a product that you have already paid for. So what's, what's 12% of a thousand dollars, $120. So that means you don't pay eleven twenty on some shoes that only cost you a thousand dollars. Now, why would you want to donate one hundred and twenty dollars to the bank? Exactly. So you don't. So the last thing you want to do is carry a B. Do not listen, y'all. Listen to me. Pay the whole balance, and the only way you can pay the whole balance is by only spending it when you got the money to pay for it. You see what I'm saying? I don't hear nothing about no um, emergency in that. There we go. <laughs> okay. I literally, uh, as you were saying that, I'm literally on my phone now paying my credit card. <laughs> okay. So now that, now that you have, um, established a trust with the bank, you've, they've introduced you to the new opportunity. Now you want to look at a regular credit card. Now I have personally, I just so y'all know, I've never had a secure credit card, but I have been, I, multiple people have told me that they've used them and they have helped them. So I just want, okay. And I put Draco on, I don't know if you want to talk about it on here, but, uh, okay. So, well, yeah. Wait, you talk about what? You having one. I didn't know if that if you want your about me having a that security. Tea? Card? I don't know. Yeah, never mind. No, I what do you mean? Are we I'll talk about my girl what? You want me to talk about it now? No, nah, no, nah, you're good. Okay. So um I can tell you my experience with that. No, you know, okay. Well sure, go ahead. Um, so maybe you talk about like how it impacts your credit and all that. Yeah, so I definitely I got my secure credit card in April. Um, and I definitely got a lower amount on my card just because I didn't want a huge responsibility yet. Since this is like literally like my first credit card in since I was 18, my mm-hmm. first credit card maxed out <laughs> like I remember the first day. So um, now that I have this card, um, my credit score has probably went up for the last four months. So I've only put you, I put a I put how a long you had the card since April. Okay. Yeah. So I had it since April, and every every month, like what I do is, just like Alicia says, I just use it to buy like small stuff. Like I use it for gas and um, stuff you would have already paid for. Yeah. So okay. I just transfer it over. Um, the only thing is, if that be getting me messed up, is that sometimes. Um, the account is pinned, like the charges are pending, so I can't put the money on my account until they hit the card. So I'll mm-hmm. forget sometimes. So like maybe like four or five days, I'll go back and check, and it's on there, then I just pay it off. Oh, but, I get what you're saying. Like it just doesn't reflect on your activity. That's interesting because I think mine show up right away. I think. I wish mine did because I would pay it right then, but mine don't do that. So I have to. And so you it. can't pay even though you don't have a balance. You know yeah, I can't. I can't. It'll say zero balance, and it'll say like how much you want to pay, and it it won't do it like that. Gotcha. Well, at least, yeah. So, um, but my score has been going up, I, and I want to say like since I got the card, um, I did do some other things that I'm gonna talk about later on, um, in this. But since I got the card, my score up has gone up almost a hundred points. That's crazy. Off of you literally spending the same money you was already gonna spend. Yeah. Except other stuff I did other stuff to get there too so like I said so I don't want to I don't want to just say oh it's just because of the card yeah. but the card has definitely been about um 80 percent of the reason why my score has gone up that much that's that's exciting honestly okay yeah, yeah I know somebody who only ever had a secure credit card and has and they got their credit up to the 700s never still to this day don't have a regular credit card okay so um so for me when I first got my first credit card, honestly, I didn't even really know why I want. I knew that I wanted to establish credit, but I thought I had done that already by getting a cell phone in my name, which don't do a good. The only thing that having a phone in your name do is report it negatively and you don't pay the bill. It don't do nothing. Really? For credit. Yes, it does not do anything. They check your credit to approve you, but it does not report to your credit bureau unless you do not pay the bill. Mm. Ain't that crazy? I'm thinking like, oh, I know I can get because and you know how I found out one time my mama tried to get a Dell computer in my name. They was like, sis, you need to get off the phone right now. <laughs> but okay, so my very first credit card. So I didn't know anything about the benefits of a credit card. I just was like most people, oh, I need it for emergencies. What if something go wrong? Okay, cool. So um, so I got this credit card from Wells Fargo. They told me they was like, hey, come on in. Like I went through the drive through to get some money out. It was like, hey, you qualify for a car? I went in, I got a car. I think my first approval was a twelve hundred dollar credit limit. And um, 
And okay, cool. To me, that's a lot of money. And guess what I did, y'all? I paid a bunch of bills off. And guess what I did right. after that? I paid whatever the minimum bill was due. And guess what that meant, y'all? I accumulated interest. And my $1,200 bill, in, for lack of better terms, ended up being an $8,000 bill. Okay. Oh. So in 2017, I had $8,000 in credit card debt. Now, this wasn't just from me paying that bill and getting interest, but I did so many other things like cash advances. I was in a really bad place financially, and I was using that credit card as cash to pay rent, pay stuff like that. And I knew that I was digging a hole for myself but in my mind at the time i'd rather have a credit card bill than to be evicted from my apartment so that's just what was going yeah. on and so i just honestly it's so funny now looking back because i was like man this this card ain't never gonna get paid i wasn't uh i mean i was making money but i was making enough to survive not enough to get out of debt and it sounded like one of them like rags to riches stories but this is really what happened so okay my okay so so my very first credit card was that one so my second credit card i think was um i got a credit card through my georgia's own credit union and to be honest y'all i don't know why why I got it. Um, there's nothing wrong with the car. I've never ever used it in my entire life. I've never swiped it. I can't even tell you if it's gonna get approved or not. Like if I it might decline because it's been like seven years since I've had the car, but the car also has zero benefits. I think what I was trying to do at the time is transfer to using the credit union. And I just thought I don't, honestly I don't have a good answer for y'all, but let me just tell you this something. This is something I learned, and this is why I'm bringing it up. This credit card had, um, just like my first card, has $0 annual fee. To me, those are the only credit cards I want. I don't want to pay a fee to have a credit card. But this card has zero annual fee, and I think I got approved for another $1,000. Over time, I was like, man, let me just close this um, credit union account. I don't need this card. Like, what am I doing with it? So the guy inside, he was like, listen, and he don't know me. He don't owe me no kind of information. He was like, don't close this credit card. Like, it's literally not bothering you. Like, it's not harming you to have it. It will harm you to lose it. Because remember, y'all, I talked about your credit being based on your access to credit. This was going to take away my access by $1,000. So mm. he was just like, just keep the car. Like, you know, and to me, it didn't really, I'm just like, he's just saying that because he want me to be a part of the bank. But he was telling me the truth. Like, it was literally like, like, you literally is not bothering you cut it up throw it away it doesn't matter you don't ever have to use the car but it does positively impact your credit so i'm like okay cool so i got a little bit older and i made a friend at work and her um she actually is one of the people who really put me where i'm at now as far as understanding credit card rewards so she was telling about this credit card she got the chase freedom card and she only uses it for rewards rewards i can't even talk she only uses it for rewards she gets free trips free movie tickets you name it i'm like now how that work and so what's funny at this time, I didn't know that um, you only pay interest when you owe the balance because all I ever did was owe a balance on a credit card. So uh, she was just saying like, okay, this is what you do. I'm going to send you my referral link. You're going to get, after you spend X amount of money, you're going to get 35,000 points on cash back. Now this credit card, the Chase Freedom card, you get cash back, not Sky Miles, not store credit. You get cash back, which means you can use these points to do whatever you want. I can cash out. I can buy gift cards. I can pay my own bill with it. I can buy plane tickets, whatever. So anyway, um, she referred me to this credit card. We both, I, I got the, the bone. I met the, the maximum thres threshold. I even transferred the balance from the old card to this card because I had 18 months of, or 15 months of no interest. So that gave me the ability to pay the balance and not let it accumulate to a higher bill. Okay. And y'all can reach out to me directly if I'm not making sense because I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but it might make more sense when I listen back to it. But anyway, so with this credit card, I, I earned my first reward. Now, mind you, I'm still in debt, y'all. So this is not even a success story. This just so I can. This just my story of how I understood credit cards. I got thirty five thousand rewards. I took that and I booked a flight to Niagara Falls, and my balance was thirty five dollars on this trip. I went to Canada for thirty five dollars. So wow. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> all i got to do is swipe this card and i get points and it's no catch y'all i swear to God. i sound like a, a pyramid scheme person but it's really no catch okay so backtrack um i just so y'all can understand how i paid off all this god darn debt long story short is i went somewhere for my job didn't have to pay rent pay my credit card off there's no success there's no fancy tips i just made myself suffer and paid the, the bill off because I knew I wanted to buy a home and my credit. Now my credit, Ooh. my access to credit was like $10,000 and I owed $8,000. So think about the negative impact that that had on my credit. On yeah. top of that, I had a car note and a car note is also debt on your, on your credit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just so crazy. And I might do another episode on how, how credit utility or DTR debt to income ratio is calculated if y'all want to buy a house in the long run. But anyway, let me stay on topic. I'm gonna see what my next note says. Um, 
Oh yeah, so I was talking about benefits. So aside from points, credit cards also other offer other things like insurance. So for example, with my Wells Fargo credit card, as long as I pay my phone bill, my cell phone bill with that credit card, anytime that my phone is stolen, broken, damaged, anything, they will pay me in reimbursement. So for example, um, last year I broke, I cracked my screen, which wasn't a big deal. I didn't really think anything of it, but then I dropped it in the shower. So now I have a liquid damage phone that does mm. not work. And to pay, to get that replaced from Apple, it was $385. Now, mind you, I pay my phone bill with this credit card. So what I did is I went to the Apple store. I paid $385 to have my phone re repaired. I paid with that same credit card. And then I called Wells Fargo. They sent me a form and they reimbursed me everything minus $25. I just had to pay $25. And so that is just a, and these are just things that banks offer to make you be attracted to using their car. Now these are all benefits, but a lot of people carry credit card debt. So even though there are benefits, they're not really reaping the, the positive aspects of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so that's one of the things you also get things like, um, if you rent a car, you get on roadside assistance, you get insurance on that car. So I don't ever have to pay for car insurance on a rental. As long as I pay for that rental with my credit card, I'm covered. I don't have to worry about that. Um, uh, aside from the cash back, you get like, you can buy gift cards at a discounted rate. So let's say I need a $500 Amazon gift card. I can probably get it for $450. Now, that's not, might not be a whole lot, but that's $50 that I ain't have to spend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's certain things that I do with my credit card that, okay, for example, like on the Chase Freedom card, they have a marketplace and all I have to do is log into my account, click on shop through chase. And if I use the link, then I will get four times the points I would have normally gotten for that transaction. So when I bought my washer and dryer, which was, uh, I think it was like $1,400. I got enough points for four washer and dryer sets and cash back. Yes. So and you so didn't pay for it. No, I did pay for it. So another, oh yeah, let me make, make sure people understand that too. So one point does not equal one dollar. That's mm -hmm. the catch. I think one point might be like ten cent or something like that. I don't right. recall, but it's, I I might be wrong. But okay, just say for every thousand dollars, I get forty dollars cash back. Okay. To, to put it in perspective, now this is a good thing because me and my boyfriend have never paid for a vacation. Never. I know I mentioned this on a while back. I mean, there are some things we have paid for, let me be clear. But most of our trips have been paid for 100% off of credit card rewards. And let me tell you how. Now, I don't know about you and your relationship. <laughs> but me and my man are very responsible. So I made him an authorized user on my credit card. Now we both have a card that's linked to this account. And every time we swipe, we get points. And we pay our, I pay my bill, he pay his bill. And that's just how it is. And so we accumulate points together. And then at the, after so many months, I think every time I read, like right now, we might be at like 900. We have like $900 of dollars to yeah, just free be, money. Yeah, f free money. Never pay interest on this credit card. Now, I, and again, y'all, if this is confusing, please, I do not have a problem with, with explaining this to y'all. Because it's, it's really Oh, she sure don't. Because I, 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 de I definitely have to come every time I... I talk uh, about it all the time. It's, it's just, I just want people to understand that you don't have to be in debt. And I know it all is based on the kind of money you're bringing in. I understand. Like, I was working a part-time job, wasn't even making $15 an hour in college, paying rent, paying a car note. And I was using, like, listen, I don't been through the struggle, y'all. Throw dirt on my name, champion of the game, <laughs> okay. they say. Sorry, Monica. Okay, so what else do I have on here? Um, oh, so another thing I mentioned was annual fee. The reason why I think it's important to not have an annual fee, I'll use my Delta Amex, for example. So I have, like, five or six credit cards, just so y'all know. And I only use one of those credit cards. Okay, so... um. So for example, my, I had, so, okay, I had the free Delta. So I had the, I had the gold Delta Amex, which I think is free for the first year. And then $95 a year for each year after that for, to, as a part of the membership. But when I calculated $95 was 950 points. So I have to spend $950 to recoup what I paid for the membership fee of that car, which to me is not fair because that's 950 sky miles that I could have put towards a flight. So guess what I did? downgraded the credit card because they have a free version that they don't advertise to you. It's the Delta Blue. There's zero dollar annual fee, nothing. No, no penalty, no nothing. The only thing that I don't get is I don't get a complimentary check bag. And guess what, love? I don't check bags anyway. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so also, uh, so now I have a Delta Amex credit card. Why don't you check bags? Because I never go nowhere where I have to. Uh -huh. The only time I've ever checked bags is when I moved to California. Oh, okay. 
yeah so useless fact but anyway so um so yeah so anyway i now so now so i'm just giving you an example of why you you can get a credit card that has a fee but honestly unless you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year it's just not it's no point y'all if there's a free card get it because a lot of these credit cards have the same benefits especially this chase freedom it's my favorite one i live but i swear by it dang that's everything okay so yeah, well i could talk about i definitely want to bring up um um the debt situation because i'm a person that has a lot of debt okay mm-hmm. um i, w- I always want to tell let people know that when i always talk about me going to jail i'm not bragging about it but that was just a big point in my life that like fucked up a lot of shit for me mm-hmm. so that's like a point where i just of course can't forget it so for starters i definitely start with my um credit card that i got at 18 and i maxed it out i bought a sidekick lx with it and <clears throat> dumbest shit i ever could have did but i bought it i wanted the phone i bought it got it whatever so um max that out never paid it off right so of course and hold up no shade but then you get that after getting fired mind your business <laughs> you in my business my bad Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> i love that video Don't that do hit that. different now I definitely got fired from my job and got that card. So that was the dumbest shit I ever could have did. But I didn't know nothing about credit at all. So when I got um, out of jail, of course, I had to pretty much start over. My credit was shot to shit. Um, I did get my first apartment in 2012. 13? 12. I got my first apartment in 2012 in my name. Now, granted, my credit score at the time didn't re- didn't impact me from getting an apartment um but i knew that i probably could have got something better had my credit would have been more it would have been higher so um over the years i definitely um hired so many people to try to fix my credit and even though a lot of that stuff did come off like they were able to get some stuff to come off but a lot of it um came back on and i had to owe the money yeah oh it was because i owed money that you know for companies so um, I did want to talk about just myths that people have. Um, I would try to get people from Instagram and people that I know to try to fix my credit, paying them. Like I've spent probably like, like at one point I was paying a law company to fix my credit. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, so I paid so much money to try to get my credit fixed and all this stuff will pop back on. So um During the pandemic, I just really kind of like sat down and just had a real talk with myself because it's a lot of stuff that I want to do on my own and I needed to get off of my credit. So I said, you know what, honestly, nothing is working. So I'm going to have to just contact these people myself and get it off. Now, I had an eviction from 2013 on my credit that really hinders me from getting a lot as as far as like cars. And then now that when I do get cars from dealerships, I get a high interest rate and I get a high car note. so the first thing I wanted to get off my credit, of course, was the eviction because I do want to move. So um, a lot of people be telling like, oh, you shouldn't pay that off. You need to get it, somebody to get it off because it's never going to come off your record. It's never going to come off. It doesn't um, come off because you don't pay. I think that's where they leave that part out. If you owe the debt, you can get it. They take it off to review it, but they don't honor it. Like they don't forgive it. Yeah. They was just like, oh, um, um, it's not gonna work. That's not gonna. You need to just not pay it off because that's gonna be a waste of money. Da, 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 da. So, me listening to those dumb people for the longest got me fucked up. So, I said, you know what? Let me just try to do this the old school way. So I was able to not old school. I mean the, the regular right way. The right way, yeah. <laughs> not not old but um, let me do this the right way. And so I ended up calling, and um. For one, they took off a thousand dollars because it was so long ago. So they they cut it down by a thousand dollars, which was perfect. And then um, everybody always was like, "Oh, you know, when you do stuff like that, you need to make sure that you get this document and follow up with it because it won't come off your record because, of course, it's sold to another company at, by this time, especially if it's been with the company forever." Which is not true. Yeah. Anywho, I said all that to say that eviction came off my credit in two weeks exactly you know what sucks man people who pay people the people that charge to quote-unquote fixed credit literally pay the amount that people could have put on those debts and and i think that the thing is yes people this is what i was told by somebody who went through on these people that they basically had the debt removed from their credit long enough to get approved for something 
So long enough to get approved for a car or a house or whatever the case is, but it did come back because after the credit bureau, like you don't, like you know, if they, if that was the case, people could just run up cards and just get it taken off. That money is old, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's just interesting to me that they have people thinking that you can fix credit that you're not actually fixing. You're just putting it under review, and that's really what it is. Yeah. So um, it came off my credit in two weeks, um, and like my credit score probably went up like 25 points 20 points That's just from crazy. doing that so i have a other a few other things on there that i'm gonna try my best to get off within it by the end of the month which i know i can because it's not that much that was the height of it and of course i have an open um car loan but i pay my car note on time so it don't matter you know you know what's it's, funny once you pay off your car note your credit score is gonna drop yeah and that's crazy. I'm like, I was supposed to have a birthday party thrown for me. <laughs> what's up with that? It's like, so what's crazy is, let's say you, you have one more payment on your car. Your credit is going to go up. But as soon as you close that loan, they're like, oh, you don't got access to $30,000 no more. Yeah. Uh, um, I would lie and say that I would keep people updated with how this is going. Um, I'm not obviously not going to share my credit score. Um, cause I don't, cause I'm with y'all in my business. I wonder, should I business. have even shared mine? But, um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep y'all updated just because, um, I feel like this was for one so easy and so quick for me to have to just pay that off that fast. Um, and then now it's just like, I'm saving a lot of money. Like I've been spending a lot of money within this last three weeks, but I'm back on my shit. I'm back, I'm, I'm back on my, on my shit. I'm, uh, I ain't, you no. Know. So, um, my next step is once I pay all my debt off, I'm going to look into purchasing some property. I really don't want to at this moment, but honestly, I know that sounds so crazy, but I don't like extra responsibility, especially because of my schedule and just how I am. Like I'm a person that lives, um, I don't know if y'all are friends with people that do the type of work that I do, but it's never consistent. Like it's never consistent. One day you'll be free for like three days. And then next thing you know, you got to fly to you, Ukraine for two weeks. And they say you a freelance artist. What the free mean? That means you don't have no limits. <laughs> <laughs> it means you can do whatever. Got when it. They say freelance, that's all you got to do. You can't have no you other job. Freelance. You gotta. You can't have no other job. You barely can have a spouse. Mm-hmm. So it's like a lot of sacrifices I be having to make. But honestly, I just love doing what I do, and I like the benefits that come with it. Like I love the fact that I can travel with my job and make money right. at the same time, and then also my work being seen all over the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? So that's fine. If only they knew you lived in a shack. That's crazy. I'm just playing. <laughs> It's like <laughs> I'm just playing. No, I think. So what do you think is the extra responsibility? The process of buying a property, or um, just it's just a it? simple fact that I know that thing. You know, it, it it's just me probably just being ignorant, but I just know what comes with the house. Um, it's a I don't. Of, I ain't had no problems. Yeah, but yes, you, I have. But it wasn't nothing that was. You good. don't have to do yard work. Sure don't, and I never will, as long as I own a condo. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, I feel maybe you. I would. That would probably be my best bet to get a condo, just because I won't have to worry about like yard work. Because I know when you live, when you own a house and you live in a say for instance a subdivision, you have to keep your yard looking a certain way. Yeah, they can put a lien on your property, which could like force you out of it if you yeah. don't comply. Yeah, I th- I mean there are definitely. I was reading something today, and this girl's tweet was like, um, and I I advocate for everybody owning homes. And obviously, you don't have to, but I, I don't think people realize the financial benefit of it, and maybe they don't want the financial benefit. But I also don't think they realize how easy the process is. But um, she was like, y'all talking about mortgage, but y'all ain't, y'all ain't talked about taxes and HOA. I'm like, sweetheart, that is the mortgage. That's all part of the mortgage. So you need to stop spreading this fake. She was like, is this for me? Do I really want to do this? You paying rent? What you think is looping to that? rent the owner's mortgage property taxes yeah. and the profit you know what i'm saying but you know do what you want but i do want people i just see i just see every time i look at properties i always look at their price history and man people i know somebody who lived in their house for one year and sold it for a hundred thousand dollars more than they paid for it period now that ain't enough to not want to keep renting a hundred thousand dollars imagine your life you imagine your life getting changed off of moving out Period, and I mean that. Period, and I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's probably it for the most part. I think that for the, I think that what 
what I, the problem for me was is that I didn't understand credit. I didn't understand how important it was. I just heard it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because I grew up in a And it could be intimidating. Is I mean, yeah, but I mean, I feel like it wouldn't be as intimidating had it would have been taught in school so that we can fully understand it because I think that for me, I just initially just kind of block shit out that I normally don't like if it's something new and it seemed like it's difficult i think that's probably what i'm doing with buying a house too <laughs> that's why i'm like i don't need to i don't want to like buy that makes sense more. yeah i don't want to bite off more than i can chew but also this is foreign knowledge to me so it could it probably ain't even that bad i'm probably just over exaggerating it because and i don't know the same place yeah yeah no i feel you i mean but i i know that i have always been a very inquisitive person so i will sit up and read articles for 20 hours which is kind of nerdy but i try to like use layman's terms because i think that people i'm i think i can be pretty relatable because of like things how i carry myself and so i try to make things as understandable as possible and that's why i try to make sure people understand i'm not an expert but this is what works for me you swipe a card you get money back Sounds easy yeah, to me. You gotta make sure your credit good enough to get the card first. So that's what I'm working on. Yeah, well, that's why we got the unsecure the, the secure credit cards. Listen, love, there's a will, where there's a will, there's a way. Let me tell y'all something. Pan like out of that eight thousand dollar credit card bill, I'm pretty sure I only actually owe five thousand dollars. But because of my interest rate, because of interest in general, I'm paying money that I didn't that I never pay like I never should have given away. Yeah. Ugh, it's stressful thinking about that. But I remember the last time I paid the. I mean, I have never, I have not carried a balance on my credit card since 2017. And I, let me say something. It's a good feeling. I'm sure it is. And I never have. I have not swiped my debit card since 2017. I literally have not. The only thing that comes off my debit card is my mortgage. That's it. Because you can't pay a pay a loan with credit. But I literally use my credit card for every transaction I make, and that's how my points accumulate. Because every little five dollar meal. Twenty dollar gas, light bill, Netflix, all of it accumulates of points. Wow, um, I, I I use my debit card. I'm sorry, I should. I just, only because I have a secure card, so I don't like to use it as much. And then I be oh free. no, I get it. So but when you, you know. get a regular one, you better listen. Everything that you was gonna pay debit, just pay credit and pay it off at the end of the week or end of the day, whatever works for you. Yeah. Pit. All right, y'all. Um, you got anything you want to talk about? Anything outside of this this topic? Nope. <laughs> okay i hope y'all found this helpful and let me know if it's some other some like more adulting topics i want to talk about i feel like i'm I'm well versed on the basics on like navigating life obviously there's a lot i don't know it's a lot of terms i don't know but i do read a lot and i listen to a lot of podcasts about finances and stuff so mm-hmm. then let me know you know what i'm saying per, per period and i mean it periods and i mean that hey y'all Oh, 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 one more thing I want to add. So if y'all are interested in the Chase Freedom Credit Card, I am going to put my referral link in the bio, in the um, episode notes. And yes, I will get paid if y'all use the link. You get free money <laughs> and I get free money. I don't want you to listen. This is you applying for this credit card at your own discretion. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But if you want to know what card I'm talking about, I will gladly share my referral link so we both can win out here in these streets, okay? Mm. Period. And I mean it. <laughs> and she mean that. Per. All right, y'all. Well, it's been another episode of OD Podcast. This actually was shorter than our normal. No, it wasn't. It's a little bit about the same. Yeah. You just you just was enjoying it too much. Period. And I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, honey. I'm about to hang up and um edit. Okay, bye. Bye.